What's going on guys, Merrick here, and with the release of the Indigo Disc DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, one of the new Paradox Pokemon we got, Gouging Fire, aside from the fact it has a just absolutely killer design, really piqued my interest in whether or not it's actually going to be a good Pokemon, or if it's allowed in the VGC competitive format, if it's going to be good. And this guy got a pretty badass new tool um, that, as far as I know, is exclusive just to him, which could give him a big edge in the VGC format. So let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. So first up, I want to go ahead and take a look at his stats and his move pool. And so starting with his stats, his stats are phenomenal. Base 105 HP. Base 115 attack, 121 defense, special attack 65, we don't care about that. Special defense of 93, and then speed of 91. He's just a little bit on the slow side, but he is faster than a lot of other Pokemon, and his defenses are all pretty solid. Even 93 is just barely shy of having all three of his defensive stats at or over 100. Now, because of his ability, the Protosynthesis... Of course, he gets a stat boost, either 30% in his highest stat, or 50% for speed while you have Sunny Day active, or the booster energy. Now, his stats are already pretty phenomenal. You could choose almost any of them that you wanted to get that boost. I would honestly say either attack or speed. If you put enough speed investment in him to trigger that he's going to pretty much outspeed a lot of things that aren't you know like speed build roaring moon and then like pokemon like fluttermane but otherwise that speed boost is gonna 91 is not that slow and honestly this could even work well for a sun team just because he is a fire type which let's talk about fire dragon as a typing that's a pretty phenomenal typing. Dragon nullifies fire's weakness to water, and fire nullifies dragon's weakness to both ice and to fairy. So other than dragon, ground, and rock, those are the only types that are going to be super effective against this thing. Which, dragon, eh, debatable. You're really not going to see it outside of maybe on a dragon Pokemon. Uh, but then rock and ground are pretty common with earthquake and with rock slide. However... Again, he's got the bulk to handle it. He's got the speed, and he's even got, honestly, the move pool. So the biggest takeaways as far as his move pool goes is going to be his first one, which is Burning Bulwark. That's his signature move, which is basically protect that also burns the attacker if it makes physical contact. Now, that sounds really fucking good, and it is good, but there are so many physical moves that don't make physical contact uh, such as the aforementioned Earthquake and Rock Slide. So while it is a great ability, it isn't as broken as it really could be, but still super solid. Most Pokemon in VGC run Protect if they aren't running just flat-out offense, and if they have room for the move. So this just is the replacement for Protect, and it's just infinitely better. Burn is pretty solid, especially since... Obviously, if a move makes physical contact, it's probably a physical attacker, which that burn is now going to hurt like hell. Obviously, your main fire move is probably going to be Flare Blitz because it is a physical base 120 damage. However, you are going to take a lot of damage with the recoil, and you do have a chance to burn, but 10% is really not a whole lot. I wouldn't recommend Raging Fury. It is basically the it's exact same output, but it's basically a fire type outrage. So it, you're going to be locked into it for two to three turns, and then Entei is going to become confused, and that's really not that's really not something you want, especially in VGC, uh, where switching out isn't as optimal uh, to do as often as it would be in uh, like singles battles, for example. Now, a few other notable moves that he gets is Smart Strike, which is a steel type move that, if I remember correctly, very few Pokemon get it. I think Solgaleo gets it. I can't think of any others off the top of my head. But it's basically a steel type move that just doesn't miss. 
it's there's no accuracy it just it's gonna hit every time which is pretty solid it gives it an option to counter fairies uh, he also gets psychic fangs which with screens running around um, because screens are very good in a doubles format uh, and Psychic Fangs just gets rid of those completely. I think Psychic Fangs is a pretty solid option if you uh, have a lot of trouble dealing with uh, the dual screens. He gets Dragon Claw, which is a pretty solid Dragon type move. There's no additional abilities to it, though. He also does get stuff like Iron Head, which, again, would be a good move to deal with fairies. He gets access to Earthquake, which I think would help out a lot with uh, certain Pokemon, like Heatran, for example. Being Fire Steel is going to resist both of his stabs, whereas then Earthquake is going to then turn around and be four times super effective. There is one more move that I want to go ahead and take a look at, too, which is Heat Crash. Basically, the more that the user outweighs the target, the greater the move's power is a physical fire type move. Now, this is one of those moves that's really going to depend on the Pokemon that you're battling specifically. Um, there's no builds that are going to change anything because it's just built into however much a Pokemon fucking weighs outside of if they have, you know, the Iron Ball to make them weigh more or the Float Rock to make them weigh less, which I don't think either of those are really ever used outside of, like, if you're going to tr use Trick to make a Pokemon slower or something stupid like that. Uh, but I do want to take a look at... How much damage Heat Crash could potentially do to some of the more popular, uh, more often used Pokemon in the VGC format. So for all of these damage calculations, uh, Gouging Fire is a neutral nature. There's no IV investments. The only moves we have on it is Flare Blitz and Heat Crash, mainly because I want to compare the two on whether or not it's worth using one over the other. Uh, Ogre Pond being the, I believe, number two most used in uh, the VGC E regulation, uh, the ranked that I was looking at, with no investment whatsoever. Flare Blitz and Heat Crash, they're going to do the exact same damage. Uh, they're also going to guarantee KO with no investment whatsoever. And then we can give him either the, the booster energy or if you're using him on a Sun Team, uh, which of course then the damage is going to be even higher because even without the Protosynthesis, the Sun Damage is going to raise that up to 153%, which is honestly pretty fucking crazy for this Pokemon in general. Um, the second Pokemon on the list that was weak to Fire Typing was Iron Hands. And Iron Hands just has such a massive HP stat, and then his defense as well, that... Flare Blitz and Heat Crash aren't really doing a whole lot of damage. If we raise the attack stat to 252, and even if we give them an adamant nature, Flare Blitz and Heat Crash aren't going to do a whole lot. But then again, Iron Hands can't do a whole lot to this thing either. Um, Heat Crash isn't doing much at all because I believe Iron Hands is like 800, 900 pounds, um, and Gouging Fire is a whopping 1300. Flare Blitz is not even coming out at. Um, 50%. I mean, if you boost it with the sun, that's a pretty substantial amount. Um, or even even with the booster energy or his ability, Flare Blitz is a guaranteed KO, even on Iron Hands, which, I mean, I don't know which build is the, the one being used the most, but it's definitely an easy option. Then the third Pokemon on the list was Rillaboom. And he does have Terra type Fire. If he didn't Terrastalize, or if they had already Terrastalized, then it wouldn't matter either way. And it's doing the same amount of damage regardless. So, so far, Heat Crash is doing identical damage to Ogre Pond. It's doing identical damage to Rillaboom uh, without the downside of Recoil. And so I think Heat Crash might be a better option so that you can, you know, increase the longevity of Gouging Fire. Now, if we go over to um, Chen Pao, his defense is a little higher than his special defense, but honestly, this thing's, it's not ever going to be invested in anything. So, the neutral nature, Flare Blitz is going to kill. Heat Crash is not. 
Uh, but again, if we go back up to an Adamant, there's a good chance. And then in Sun, obviously there's a, a good chance. But even without Sun, if you get a plus one on the attack, it's a guaranteed KO. Blur Blitz is better there, but it almost it almost feels like there's good reason to run both of them. Uh, the next Pokemon, of course, being Goldengo, who's been a royal pain in the ass since the very beginning. And again, we see Flare Blitz and Heat Crash doing the same amount of damage. Adamant is a 50% chance to KO. If we, you know, slap on a boost, 136. If we activate the Sun, it's 176. So, again, it's doing the same amount of damage. And I, I really, I just don't know. It's there. I can see reasons to run Flare Blitz, but Flare Blitz does have such recoil where that amount of HP that you lose can make a difference. I've literally had Pokemon live on you know one, two, three HP that you wouldn't have had because of Flare Blitz's recoil. The last Pokemon we're going to look at being Amoongus, who again has been a Pokemon that's been uh, in the meta for the entirety of Scarlet and Violet, and even before Gen 9. And Flare Blitz and Heatcrash, again, doing the same damage on a neutral nature. Adamant, it's a little bit more, but it's not... And that's not even with investment. If we do investment, it's pretty high up there. If it gets a boost off, it's a guaranteed KO. Um, unless he Terra's, which... Then I guess it Terra's into water. You've got Dragon that you can go with. You could also go with ground, though you're going to get stabbed with the dragon. Gouging Fire does have other other moves, but they are somewhat limited in what he can do. Breaking Swipe is, is kind of really just low, just low tier. Um, scale Shot, I don't really think Scale Shot would be worth running. It's, it's mainly just the few moves. You could go for Outrage, but again, you don't want to be locked into a move. That would be like a final desperation move. Um, Stone Edge, I don't really think would be worth it. Earthquake would be better, but it wouldn't really do anything with Amoongus outside of giving neutral damage. But again, Dragon, you've got Stab. So, I, th I feel like your best bet uh, is going to be, you know, just those few moves. We've looked at Heat Crash, we've looked at Flare Blitz, uh, he gets access to Smart Strike and Iron Head. Gets access to Psychic Fangs. He gets Dragon Claw for a decent Dragon Stab. Gets Earthquake for coverage. And then gets Burning Bulwark for the uh, Protect ability. He also gets access to... Um, where is it? Morning Sun. It's somewhere on this list that I just... I'm not seeing it, but I know that it's on there somewhere. Where the hell did it go? Doesn't get morning sun? Yeah, right here. Gets morning sun. So, he can increase his longevity even further. And if you put him on a sun team, that's a 75%. That's just a full heal almost. Which is absolutely crazy. And then, depending on what you want to do with your item if you use him on a sun team your item is freed up to be whatever you want it to be if you're using booster energy then you don't have to put him on a sun team now i do think that based on his based on his ridiculous stats you could go for a few different builds the first build that comes to mind being a sun team so i would say you could do 252 in each if you did a Jolly Nature, is his attack stat is going to be 10 higher than his speed stat. So if we just took away just enough of the EVs to make it one point lower. So 168. So then it honestly gives you 84 points that you could put into his HP stat. And this way, his speed is 157. He's going to get the boost... Um, he's going to get the boost, make his speed stat at 232, which, or two, 
He's going to get the speed increase at 235. You have the option to run him on a Sun team. You could run him with some investment. Right here, this shows you the best investment as far as getting the speed stat to be higher than the attack stat to get that boost. I do feel like you have to choose one or the other between Flare Blitz and Heat Crash. You could have both of them uh, to be able to handle both scenarios since uh, Flare Blitz does take care of Chen Pao and Iron Hands better than Heat Crash does. However, it seems like outside of really bulky heavy Pokemon, uh, Heat Crash is going to do the same amount of damage and save you uh, a good bit of that recoil damage in return. Now, you could opt to run three damaging moves to have your coverage, and you could run Morning Sun uh, if you're running a Sun team. You could run Morning Sun even if you're not, because he's bulky enough even without the Sun uh, to be able to recover a lot of that health back. However, you could also run the Burning Bulwark if you're having trouble with physical attackers, because that Protect is going to you know, have that additional burn effect as well. If you're not that interested in using Morning Sun, you're not running a Sun team, or you don't even care about Burning Bulwark because it only burns for physical contact, you could run this thing with a freaking Assault Vest, which I don't even think would be a bad idea, just because a base special defense of 93 is not freaking bad at all. And with the 50% increase there, is it even, okay, yeah, I was looking at the wrong number. Um, you know, it's going to take even less damage. This thing would be bulky as sin, 93 would be 46, so plus another 46, that's 139. So if we just say 139, let's just take away the plus one here. And, I mean, suddenly even Fluttermane is doing very little to this thing. I feel like 156 attack, 157 speed, 159 defense. Or special defense, the defense is already pretty high at 141. And then 191 HP. You can make this thing literally just a goddamn walking menace. And if you put the speed investment in him... For him to be able to get that boost, he's going to outspeed a lot of things. However, I think the one drawback to Assault Vest is that while he is able to take each individual hit better, uh, his longevity doesn't exist as much because he doesn't have Protect slash Burning Bulwark. He doesn't ac have access to Morning Sun. And the worst part being is unless he's on a Sun team, he's not going to get the boost from a booster energy from Protosynthesis, and while 157 is a pretty decent speed, it is going to outspeed um, a good majority of the meta outside of things that are, you know, just supposed to be naturally speedy anyways, so you could just opt to run Adamant instead of, instead of Jolly and just let him just be an absolute, you know, just monster. You could just not even bother putting in any kind of defensive stat you could put in four in his hp 252 in his or four in his defense 252 in his hp 252 in attack and suddenly that attack stat is now 183 just by itself and then if you put him in the sun well i mean that's almost 200 damage so i think this thing has the potential to be an absolute powerhouse. Got a good couple of options based on what you want him to do and what kind of team you want to put him on. So, is he broken? No. Is he extremely fucking close? Yeah, probably. I think he's a really solid option, and I think not a lot of people are talking about Heat Crash, which I think is a much more viable option than people are giving it credit for since I don't see anybody giving it any. Let me know what you guys think about Gouging Fire. Do you think he has a place 
in the upcoming meta once he becomes legal. Do you think there's better build options for it than the ones that I've already mentioned? And if so, let me know which they are in the comments down below.